out with them outside of appointments. Um, I don't like text them. I do have a couple of their personal phone numbers. But I mean, that's just whatever. Um, it's usually because they're like, hey, I need this. Can you make this? And I'm like, of course I can make that. I can make anything. I can't make myself swallow food, but I can make anything. Um, later on, I'm going to go through and put some hot glue on these and cut this. This is bothering me. I think what I'm going to do is... Bring this around here, I think. kind of just go like this yeah um so he's just like well, that's why we're doing it we're gonna we're gonna see what's going on and i was like what could it be and he was like we don't know so like the fact that he's not saying oh it could be this it could be that immediately gives me like you know um worst case scenario you know which even if it is the thing that I I think it is because I always go to the, the bad place it's apparently very you know it's not a big deal like I mean it is a big deal especially if they catch it early whatever so I, I'm immediately just like oh my god oh my god how am I gonna tell my mom about this oh my god but um I schedule my appointment my appointment is Tuesday and that's where we're gonna go so I mean I don't know what to think. I am, I'm upset. Because I really want, like, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor. Like, I just, I was so hopeful. I was like, I'm going to go to the doctor. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, we can, we can prescribe you this. And we can give you this shot or whatever. And that's not what it was. What is this wreath already, y'all? I'm just like, what's going on? So... So, I really have no, like, I just grabbed stuff that I thought would work, so. This is so, like, lopsided. Alright, so let's fix the lopsidedness first by adding in some florals that hide it. Right? I mean, that's what we do. So I left the doctor's office. I went and got a mufalada for my mom. Um, because I said I was gonna go get something to eat. Cause y'all, we had this horrible storm here last night. I woke up, it was like three in the morning. The um the thunder was like crazy. And I was like, am I really up at three in the morning? And I was like, I'm going back to bed, and I could not get back to sleep. Um So I ate breakfast super early. And I told her, I was like, I really want to eat a ham sandwich. Y'all were like, of course you want to eat a ham sandwich. Um, I was like, I really want a ham sandwich. I think I'm going to stop at Kinsenko's. And she's like, if you go get me a mufalata. So after I left the doctor's office, I was like, I really don't feel like going there. I really don't feel like doing anything. I just want to go home and get in bed and do nothing. But I was like, let me go and uh, talk to my mom. And I'm going to pull off some of these leaves. to my mom, tell her what's going on, have her make me become a rational human being. And I went and talked to her and she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I have to have an ultrasound. She's like, well, what does he think it is? I said, he doesn't know. That's why we're doing the ultrasound. So now like our, our things are switched where I'm like, I don't know, mom. That's what we're trying to figure out. Whatever it is, it is what it is. It is probably just a, is it, what do they call it, like a nodule? And of course my mom's like, don't go home and research this and, you know, watch surgeries on YouTube or, or Google thyroid cancer. And I was like, I'm not gonna. And on the way home, I call Michelle. And she's like, what's going on? And I told her, she's like, wait, I'm looking it up right now. And I was like, no, 
okay? But you know, the weirdest thing is, I got my ham sandwich, went to my mom's to eat it, had a, no problem eating it at all. I ate too much of it, it made me throw up, but while I was eating it, I wasn't like, oh, my throat's closing, and I don't know if it's because I was by my mom, and I was like, not anxious about eating, because I, the past couple days I've been like, extremely like as soon as I as soon as I start getting hungry, like the panic just sets in, which uh, that's not good because I don't know about you guys, but I have to eat to stay alive. Um, I don't know what you I don't know your personal life, so yeah, I tried to eat some dinner today, and I was like, nope, this is not gonna work. So I think I might just make me some scrambled eggs later and. Let's talk about nicer things now. Actually, this might be worse than the whole me possibly having something. If you guys have Netflix and you have not watched the movie Deadly Illusions, you need, I'm gonna tell you right now, I usually say finish this video and then go watch the movie. No, screw this video, go watch this movie. Cause I'm about to spoil it. Um, I keep seeing in my recommended people like, oh my god, Deadly Illusions, Deadly Illusions. And I'm like, they keep showing like, you know, in the thumbnail, there's like a picture. And I'm like, is that Kristen Davis? She looks terrible. So I go on Netflix and it's Kristen Davis who plays Charlotte in Sex and the City. I'm sure, you know, I mean, she's not like a household name, but she plays Charlotte. Y'all know who Charlotte is. Even if you didn't watch Sex and the City, you know who like, you know who the people are. So I'm like, hmm. It's Charlotte. I mean, it's Kristen Davis. Oh, well, Charlotte. It's basically Charlotte with a different job because Kristen Davis does not have the, um, uh, she doesn't have the range of a Kristen Stewart or a, um, she doesn't have a, a she does what she does. But this is like supposed to be a, a drama thriller, but it mostly read as a comedy. So it's Kristen Davis and Dermot Mulroney, who is not Dylan McDermott. Dermot Mulroney is my best friend's wedding. Dylan McDermott is Steel Magnolias in American Horror Story. I had to explain that to Michelle when I was telling her about this movie and she was just shook. She was like, wait, they're two different people? And I was like, yes, they are two different people. I said, Dylan McDermott's more famous, Dermot Mulroney. He's pretty famous too, huh? So, Deadly Illusions is the story of Mary, who's played by Kristen Davis, a beautiful, successful, best-selling author who lives in a house with her beautiful husband and her beautiful twins. And uh, you get the feeling, like, I don't know if it's, the last thing I saw her in was a Sex in a City, like Sex in a City 2. And she was not showing where, which I think possibly because, you know, that was a higher budget movie. They probably had better cameras. They probably had better makeup artists, people. So I'm like, she's looking rough. But then I'm thinking like, she's also like 50. So she's looking her age. She's not actually looking rough. She's just looking like not sex in the city, Charlotte. Um, so she has these twins and like, she's written this series, like, this successful series of books, and she's kind of stepped away from that because, you know, she went through, they imply that she went through, like, in vitro to have these twins, and now she wants to be, you know, she just wants to be a mom, and she's a good mom. You know, she's always, like, cooking, and um, even though she's got all this money, it's, like, implied that she does everything, like, you know, she does her own laundry, she cooks her own meals. Like, there's not, like, a, a housekeeper or, like, a chef or... A, she doesn't even have, like, an assistant. Um, so, the publishers uh, um, come to her and they're like, Listen, we're really in a bind. We need you to write a new book. And she's like, No, I don't want to do that. Uh, I become a different person when I write. Now, this is a theme throughout the movie. I become a different person when I write. And I'm, like, I'm expecting her to, like, turn into a dragon. Or, like... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But she's like, I'm a different person when I'm writing. I'm like, what does that mean? 
Kristen Davis. Determined to carry Bradshaw. Um, so she's like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't like. I, I, it's it's wrong of you to ask me. You know, like this is it's, it's not. I'm not. That's not what I'm doing anymore. Um, but then she realizes that the husband has made some bad investments and most of their money is gone. How convenient. So now she has to write the book. And her friend, who is Viv from, I know her, I know her name, but I don't, I don't at the same time. She's Viv from Shameless. What is her name? That's like a country white girl name, I think. Anyway, she's like, you need to get a nanny to watch them kids. And she's like, no, I spent too much money having them. I'm not going to, like, spend more money letting somebody else raise them. She's like, you need to do this. You can fully devote yourself to this book. You can get it done. You can solve this problem that your husband created. So she hires a nanny. The nanny is Grace, and she's kind of dowdy, and she's, you know... She basically hires her because she likes to read. Like, she's like, oh, I love to read. And Kristen Davis is like, well, I don't need to really see any qualifications because if you love to read, like, clearly you're qualified to take care of my children. Do you know CPR? Oh, oh no, no, don't ask. Do you have, like, a degree in education? No, you don't? Okay, well, it doesn't matter. You know, you like to read. So she hires her, and then Mary starts working on the book, and she becomes a different person. And the first day she's working on the book, it's implied that it's the first day. Like, it's the, Grace's first day there. It's her first day, like, starting to write. And she's writing this book longhand, which, why? Why would you do that? Um, maybe it's her process. Michelle was like, it's her process. And I was like, well, it's stupid. And it's, it's going to waste a lot of time. So she's, she's like, and she's, she's constantly walking around smoking a cigar, which she smokes cigars like somebody would smoke cigars. Like she's practically chain smoking cigars throughout this entire movie. Don't really give a reason why. I was like, that's an interesting character choice. And I was like, oh, look, she's, she's a boss. She's a boss. She's a boss girl. I mean, she's a boss woman. She's a boss B. Um, and also there are extended there are extended scenes of her and the husband having relations and it goes on for a very long time but it's not like wow this is a super this is a super steamy sex scene because you literally see nothing like nothing the entire movie they show his butt when he's in the shower for like 10 seconds and then I was like, why is this sex scene so long and like they're making so much noise, but you can't see. I was like, it was weird. It was it was like a lifetime movie sex scene. But like every time every because I guess it, it, it's instead trying to show like she's an older woman, but she's still got her husband, she's still got her look, she's rich, she loves cigars. Um So the first day she's writing, she stops to like Grace is, like, cleaning the house or something, or doing something. Um, she's like, I'm gonna start on the kitchen, and then tomorrow we'll do the office. And I was like, what are you, look, are you the nanny? Are you, like, reorganizing? Are you the home edit? Are you those annoying women on Netflix? So, Grace is, like, cleaning, and she hears Mary scream, and Mary's like, ah! Because it's Kristen Davis, and she's like, ah! So she goes in, and Mary's like, I thought I would take a bath. And I was like, I thought you were writing a book. Why are you taking a bath? So, Grace patches her up, and then, this is their first day. First day writing the book, first day on the job for Grace. Mary's like, you know what? We should go out. And she's the, and Grace is like, oh no, I have so much work to do. She's like, no, Grace, we deserve this. And I was like, why? All she did was like, she like, she did the breakfast dishes, and, and you smoked a cigar, and twirled a pen around, and then decided to take a bath. So they go. <laughs> Michelle's like, what is this movie? They go to they go to a store 
And it's, it doesn't, like, I don't think they have bags. It's not like they went out shopping and this is a store they end up with. Like, I don't think they have bags from other places they've gone. So she goes in there and, like, the place they go in legit looks like a Goodwill. Like, you know, it's not like they have a, like, a black dress and has five different sizes of it. Like, it's, like, a dress on the same rack as overalls next to a raincoat next to, like, you know, a, a East of Bunny Costa. It's, like, it looks like a very weird thrift store they go in. And I'm like, oh, she's got all this money, but she's taking her thrifting? Like, she couldn't have... Okay, that's weird. So the, the clerk comes up, and she's like, what can I help you with? And Kristen Davis is like, we're getting my friend a new bra. And I was like, what? What is going on? So they go in there, and there's, like, this extended scene of them trying on bras, and Kristen Davis being like, oh, I remember when my boobs looked like that. And the girl's like, touch them. And, and I'm like what where what she doesn't say touch them she like puts her hand on it and she's like to remind you what 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 they were like and Kristen davis is like ooh, i don't know what to do so the next scene you know next scene she's like talking to her friend um the girl from shameless and she's like have you ever been attracted to a woman she's like no she's like but something about grace drives me crazy and i was like what exactly is it is it because she reads because this is a lot of this you're really invested in this woman you've known for like a week at this point <laughs> like you're, you're willing to like uh, i don't know so they kind of develop a relationship but at the same time you're like are they in a relationship or is one of them crazy are both of them crazy and i'm not going to spoil the whole movie for you but let me tell you it is ridiculous the conclusion is ridiculous the end is ridiculous i was just like when it was over, I was just like, wait, what? And these scenes, these these sex scenes with the husband and with... Because they don't have a... Well, I guess there is kind of like a, a, a... There's a sex scene between Grace and Mary. Um, that is surprisingly one of the more graphic ones, but still, like, just... Prime time sex scene like something you would see on NBC on a Thursday night like it's they're very weird and I don't know why they're there I, I don't know but then I was like I, I need to see what's going on with this movie and of course I, I look it up on on YouTube and a bunch of people are like what the hell is this and I was like please somebody tell me the same thing because I do not know but I watched a bunch of reviews of it and I was like okay I'm not the only one who just has no idea what, what was going on Michelle's like, it's really inappropriate to, um, to take your assistant, to take your nanny bra shopping. And I was like, you think? And the other thing is her friend, who is, I think her name's Elaine in the show, in the movie. She is her former therapist. Um, if nobody's ever been in therapy, that's not how things work. Like, if you're not somebody's therapist anymore, you don't, like, hang out afterwards and, like, go to the gym together. so weird it was so weird but like in a strange way i was like this is awesome but also why i mean you can definitely tell that kristen davis signed on to this movie before she heard about the sex in the city reboot because it's it's pretty bad like it's it's got some bad dialogue it's got like weird plot holes things that go completely unexplained If you want to, um, that, I don't want to spoil the whole thing because there is a, there is like a, a thing that happens later on. Um, but yeah, if you want a movie to like, just sit down with a bag of popcorn and shut your mind off for two hours, cause it's two hours long. I watched it at double speed, but I was still like, this movie's too long. Um, check it out because you, you will, you will be disappointed, but in a good way. Like, I don't understand. Like, there's a scene where the husband comes home from work and, like, Grace is with the kids and, like, Kristen Davis is cooking dinner and he's like, he's like, uh, hey, hey. And she's like, I'm cooking dinner. And he's like, hey, baby, when's the last time we, uh, did it in the kitchen? 
And she's like, the kids are right there. So, like, they go in, like, the garage or something and have another PG... I don't even... I don't even want to say PG-13. I just want to say, like, a PG sex scene. And I'm like, who is watching this? The... The... the, the cook, whatever's on the stove is gonna burn. And I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, God, there's sex in this movie, but... I am definitely one of those people that's like, why is there sex in this movie at this point of this movie? And why is it so weird? But I told Michelle, I said, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a, uh, you know, like all those movies came out after Fifty Shades of Grey made so much money. They were like, ooh, this is a sexy movie. And I was like, who is this sexy for? Because men aren't watching this movie, except for me. I'm sure I'm the only man who watched this movie. So, like, is this is this is this something they they made to be like, oh, let's have a thriller movie, but it's sexy for women. It was just it was very strange. But I was like, I think I need to give it a second watch. And Michelle was just like, why? I said because I still don't know what happened. I watched so many, like, so many reviews of the movie, and everybody is like, so it ends, and we just don't really know what happened. And I was like, that's exactly how I feel. This is cute. I was really not expecting that when I sat down today, but... like spread these out I think because I have like a little gap down here I want to fill in so yeah I know I, I give y'all movie recommendations sometimes so that's definitely one to um avoid at all costs but also watch immediately it was just so weird it was weird casting it was it was a weird story save your sex in the city money why are you doing this like she was in um what is that deck the halls you know where she's she's matthew broderick's wife who is sarah jessica parker's husband which is weird um i don't know i just i don't i don't want to be in a movie where i'm like making out with my best friend's husband wife um like she's good in that like that's a role that she's good for but this is like what are you doing, Kristen Davis? What's going on? Alright, this is like lacking over here. And I don't know that I want to put any of this in there. This is just a bush of greenery that I pulled down. is almost done. I also watched this movie on Shudder. I watched Saint Maud on Shudder. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna get into that one because I feel like that is a that is a movie for a very specific audience and I'm pretty sure y'all are not it. Um, this has like one of those like horror films, but it's like an A24 movie, so it's a little pretentious. I thought it was a little pretentious. Um, but I watched Combustion, not Combustions, it's Spontaneous. It's called Spontaneous. It's the girl from 13 Reasons Why. about this already? 
Oh no, that was that was another another one another movie I was talking about. She's a high senior in high school. They're they're starting their like senior year, and one of her classmates just spontaneously explodes. And like not like explodes in fire, like she just like her body explodes. Like there's no damage to her clothes or anything, and it keeps happening. And they like quarantine the kids, trying to figure out what's going on. And it's a comedy. Like it's it's funny. It's fun. Oh look, oh look, the guy was playing football, and everybody like he just scored a touchdown, and then he just spontaneously exploded. Um, And then it takes this turn where it gets super depressing and like super real where you're like wait these these kids that are exploding like they have families and they have parents and I, like it just like if you're gonna if you're gonna be a comedy you need to stick with that you need to see it through the end you can't turn into like this like hardcore drama halfway through i hate genre changes like that like, hey, I, I signed up for a comedy. I don't, I don't want to be worried about what, how, how the the football player's sister is, is dealing with this. Do I keep this? No. But that was good. It also had like a not so satisfying ending. the girl, um, I think her name is Catherine Lang, Lang, Catherine Langford? If you've seen 13 Reasons Why, she plays Hannah. Um, like, I was like, she looks so different, like, she's got a terrible wig on, first of all, which that never helps anybody. But, like, I keep seeing these scenes, and then, like, I, I Google, like, Catherine Langford weight change, and, like, there's all of these, like, things about people, like, why did she get so fat? And I was like, oh, is that it? Like, I didn't, like, I was just, like, looking at her, and I was like, she looks different than, she was in Knives Out, she was in 13 Reasons Why, um, and I was trying to figure out if she gained weight, just because she's a little bit older now, and she just gained a little bit of weight, it's not like, it's not like she was 100 pounds, and now she's 400 pounds, like, I was like, she just, she looks different, um, so I was trying to figure out if she gained weight, just because she's whatever, or if she had lost weight for 13 Reasons Why, because she's pretty, she's pretty petite in 13 Reasons Why. But I, could, I couldn't figure it out because everybody's just like, why is she so fat? And I was like, why are you such a jerk? And I don't even think she's just fat, she's got a really, she's got a large chest. Like, like horror comedies that's good and then it gets real which like I mean you know if all these people are exploding like somebody's mourning them but like to just bring it home was weird hell does this even need a bow I need something right here Maybe. This have a pipe cleaner that's just randomly hanging out on my desk, my table. Well, this came out pretty good for a project where I sat down and legit had no idea what I was doing.
which to be fair has not happened yet it just feels like it and that is i was that's what i was telling my doctor i was like listen you know like i have been dealing with this anxiety thing for a long time um this is not a symptom i can deal with i was like i can't be minding my business eating sushi and then be like wait a minute can i breathe It's like, no, no, I get it. Breathing, breathing. People like to breathe. And I was like, yeah, people like to breathe. I hate anxiety. I would not wish, I would not wish anxiety on my worst enemy. Oh my God, who is my worst enemy? Uh, it's probably Corinne, Michelle's kid. posted on Instagram. She's like, I'm so proud of the kids. They both made honor roll. When I talked to her later, I was like, they both made honor roll? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, Corinne made honor roll? And she's like, why do you say it like that? And I was like, no, nah, it's just... I, I did not think that was something she did. And she's like, what does that mean? And I was like, nothing. Nothing. It's just, you know, she dumb. But she's really not. So, see, I picked all, out all that ribbon, and I was like, I don't know about that ribbon, and now I'm glad that I didn't do the ribbon. I mean, where would I even put a bow? Because this, it doesn't make any sense to put one here. This would be the place I would put it, but it would be, like, coming out the side. Somebody just screamed, don't make a bow. And then somebody pick up the ribbon, they were like, don't make a bow! I do like that bow. I think this red is like, because this is like a watercolor rooster. Yeah, you because know, it's got like the watercolor splotches on it. So I don't know that this is. Yeah, definitely not that. I don't think I would mind like a um kind of if we just did a I'm just gonna leave it. I like it. Y'all think I like y'all like it? I'll post it on Patreon. I'll see what everybody says once I go find my phone. Alright, so that is it. Um shall we break down pricing? The font sign was five, the wreath was five. I dropped it. Ugh. Dropped the pen. Okay. Well. Okay. The sign was five. The wreath was five. Everything else was leftovers except for... Everything else was like leftovers I didn't care about. But like these were like three when I got them. So say it's like two, five, six, seven. So 7 plus 10 is 17 times 3, which is like 60-ish. There's still like empty spots right here. It's not empty spots, it's just I can see glue. Um, so like 60-ish, which means that it would go on Etsy for 85? Oh, that's on there really good too. I didn't even try to like see how that was on there. Let me, um, I thought I heard something fall out, fall out. Let me take these and trim them. Let me show you guys a little tip. I know I did this before in another video, but from the sunflowers. Just 
because this can, you know, if it turns or something, it can get kind of scratchy. And I just, I really hate, um, I really hate pipe cleaners on the back of grapevines. Like on the back of a deck, I'm actually like, okay, well, look at all of this stuff over here. Um, it's like, you know, okay, well, that has to be a bunch of a bunch of pipe manners because that's how everything's attached. I don't usually care too much about high glue, but it's like, that's a lot right there. Okay. So there we go. Okay, guys, I don't know. Something's wrong with my camera. It keeps shutting off. Um, this is a finished wreath. Uh, I hope y'all all got that deadly illusions. I hope y'all got all of that. Um, if you want to buy this wreath, it's linked down below. If you want to look at any of my other wreaths, there's a link to Etsy. You can follow me on Instagram. There's a link to Patreon where we're having fun. We're making wreath embellishments. We're dealing with my current crisis. And there's also a link to Venmo if you want to tip me $5 so I can get some more titty. And uh, I am so aggravated that this stopped recording again. But I'm going to deal with it. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye.